Well, good afternoon. And if you would, make, uh, make your way to a seat so we can begin. Uh, well, welcome to the celebration and memorial of life for Greg Fulton. Uh, you represent some of Greg's uh, co-workers, his closest friends, uh, and his family. And it's on behalf of them that I want to welcome you uh, and say thank you for coming to honor Greg this afternoon. Uh, my name is Jake, and I'm a pastor down the road, and I was a friend of Greg's. Uh, I actually first met Greg uh, here at Lake Sawyer. I was invited to, to join a, a committee uh, that he was leading. And right away, of course, I recognized that Greg was a professional and a good communicator uh, and organized. But then, like all of us have noticed, I noticed Greg was kind. And not the throwaway word like, oh, that's a nice person. But like genuinely kind. Uh, he, he was attentive, present, caring, uh, never rushed. He was intentional and so much more. Uh, over the next almost 15 years, I learned that Greg was truly all of those things uh, in each of his relationships. Uh, and if you knew Greg, you knew that he cared about you, uh, that he thought about you, and that he, that he deeply loved you. Uh, when I first heard about Greg's passing, I actually thought about a passage of scripture uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 12. It's kind of a weird passage to read at a memorial service, but, but Samuel was the prophet to the nation of Israel. And uh, he was essentially like the religious head of state. And at the end of his time serving, he asked the entire nation, uh, now testify against me in the presence of the Lord and before his anointed one. And then he went through things that people often hold against other people. And in verse 4, the entire nation says, no, they replied. You have never cheated us or oppressed us. You have uh, never taken even a single bribe. And uh, as I heard the news a few weeks ago about Greg, I thought about that passage uh, and, and, and went, that is him. There is no one who has anything against Greg. Uh, Greg has many who love him and were loved by him. And uh, we all universally agree uh, that he's gone too soon. Uh, and so with that, I would love to tell you the story of Greg. Greg was the first child born to Gary and Sherry Fulton on August 15th of 1967 at Beale Air Force Base in Marysville, California. His brother Dean came along one year later in August of 68, and while Greg was still very young, the family moved to Washington State where they settled in the Olympia and Tacoma area. Greg grew up going to school in Lakewood where he attended kindergarten through 12th grade and ultimately graduated from Lakes High School with the class of 1986. Greg attended the University of Portland where he earned a bachelor's degree in, in computer science on a full scholarship through the Air Force ROTC program. There he met Raina, the love of his life in 1987 uh, when he was just 20 years old. After he graduated and shortly after his 23rd birthday, they were married on August 25th of 1980, or 1990. For the next eight years, they lived and adventured all over the Midwest while serving in the U.S. Air Force. Over the years, Greg was promoted to the rank of captain. Uh, he earned scholarships and achieved uh, the first of his master's degree, uh, degrees in computer science from the University of Nebraska. It was uh, during that time their first child, Mitch, was born in 1994, and Kylin coming soon after. And then in 1998, Greg and Raina decided to settle their family outside of the Air Force, and they moved uh, to Maple Valley. For the last 25 years, Greg has worked for the Boeing Company as a software engineer. In 2009, he was granted a scholarship from them uh, at the City University, where he earned his second master's degree, an MBA, all while working full-time and raising a family. Uh, Greg loved his Boeing family uh, and, he, and the work that they did there together. Uh, he worked on numerous classified systems from the F-22 to the most recent Air Force One aircraft system. Outside of work, Greg was very active. Uh, he was a leader here at Lake Sawyer uh, in small groups, ushering and greeting the James Brigade and so much more. Uh, he believed that church uh, was where everyone deserved to be seen, uh, like they mattered and attended to. Greg was an avid runner and hiker. He loved sports, 
uh, and was the commissioner of our football league where uh, he regularly beat me, uh, and I still owe him $20 from this last season. Uh, But more than all of that, he fiercely and intentionally loved his family, and he loved the Lord. Nothing in the world mattered more to him than his family. Every one of his commitments and obligations was placed after his family in order of importance, and Greg loved them deeply. As of late, Greg and Raina were empty nesting. They moved to 10 trails in Black Diamond three years ago and absolutely loved it. Greg was out making friends and helping his neighbors any time he could. Greg lived a full and happy life. Greg loved the Lord, Greg loved his friends, and Greg really, really loved his family. Uh, Greg's relationship with the Lord was something he held dear. Uh, the reading of the Lord's Prayer uh, was, was important to him and, and something that uh, I'd like to close out my time before we sing together. Let me, let me pray for us, if you would, bow your head with me. Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And with that, I would like to invite Celeste and John to the stage to lead us in the hymn, It Is Well.
one of the best ways that we have to honor and to celebrate a person's life is to hear of the impact that they had in the lives of other people through some of the people that knew them the most. And so the family has selected a few people to come and share stories of Greg's impact in their lives. And first, I'd like to invite up Kevin Thompson. Good evening. Um, I recall my first meeting of Greg when he asked me to join him to be an usher at Lake Sawyer Church here a little over 20 plus years ago when we were in a smaller building just down the road from here. He went from leading that team to leading the entire guest services team and together we served in this role every Sunday up until late 2018. Greg loved the Lord and he was passionate that every person who walked through these doors felt like they were loved and that they belonged here. We also served together in Jane's Brigade Ministry. Once a month we met with other men to go out and care for widows in our community, helping with their home maintenance, their tasks around the homes. Greg showed up faithfully every month with his collection of battery-operated power tools. <laughs> Only once where his batteries not charged, I can still see this look on his face. Serving and making connections with others in the community literally filled him up. The building we're in here today, Greg was a part of the team who helped plan it out. His name, along with many of ours, handwritten in the foundation of this church below the seats that you all are sitting in. Our kids went to preschool here. We've done life together in small groups with many friends, going camping trips, Bon Jovi concert. Notice the pictures and concerts. He loved rock and roll. Ski trips. So many memories that are too, many, too numerous to mention. We didn't plan it out this way, but we also both bought our homes in uh, Tendra Hills down the road here. Greg and I would talk about where we thought we might move to when we retired. I'm thinking for me, maybe someplace warmer, maybe Arizona. Not Greg. He said this is where he wants to be. He loved it right here. He loved his home. He said, I'm not going anywhere. Greg loved his family. And he loved his new community and his neighbors. He was living his best life. About 16 years ago, Greg and I both took men's discipleship classes. And we became accountability partners. <laughs> Sorry. To this day, Greg and I still got together on a regular basis to meet up. In fact, I was waiting for a call from him to add our next date on our calendar. There's always something I look forward to, and it's something I will always miss. He was the best at always having the right thing to say. I only hope that I encouraged him as much as he encouraged me. We pray for each other, for our families. Besides my wife, he was one of my biggest cheerleaders and my best friend. Greg loved his family and was fiercely protective of them. He didn't say no to many things when it came to serving and helping others. But when he did say no, it was because it was the best thing for his family. Raina, he loved you so much and was so, so proud of both Kylan and Mitch. There was always joy in his face and in his heart when he talked about his family. 
John 15, 12, 13 says this. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. In this verse, his friends does not mean just those he knew. It's all the people around him, at work, in his neighborhood, in his community. Greg lived this verse out loud, but in a very humble way. He was incredibly faithful and had the highest integrity of any person I've ever known. If you find the word faithful, honorable, and humble in the Bible, I'm pretty sure Greg's name would be written beside it. He was passionate about connecting with people and making them feel genuinely loved and cared for. Knowing Greg, he would say the best way to honor his memory is to live out this same genuine love by checking in and caring for his family, not just today or tomorrow, but into the future. Besides being a great leader, Greg had mad mediator skills and communication skills, as you heard from Jake as well. He always brought a sensible, thoughtful, realistic approach to any problem that literally could cause people to hit the pause button. He also had the best hilarious stories, things that only could happen to Greg. <laughs> there was a time he shared with our small group about a rash that he had, and the rash required him to apply a special lotion several times a day. So he's at work, and he goes into the restroom stall to do this serious lotion application, as he would put it. He said it was obvious that he was in there doing something. <laughs> and when he walked out the, of the stall, there was a man standing there looking at Greg. Greg looked right back at him with a bottle and a lotion in his hand <laughs> and looked at the man and said, I have a rash for real. <laughs> and I have to put a lotion on it. And he walked away. Another story he told me about, and it was posted on Facebook as well. So someone decided to use his deodorant one day, or yesterday, he says, and did not put it back in the location that he could find it the next morning. So, he, so I get to speak at a business meeting today smelling like ooh-la-la -la lavender, <laughs> women's secret. Because nothing says, take me seriously, while I talk about national defense like oh la la lavender. <laughs> I'm sure I have plenty more, but we gotta move on. Greg was a quiet competitor. We were one of the original founding members of the Lake Story Fantasy Football League that we're still playing in today. If you knew Greg, anything that requires a spreadsheet means he's all in. Not just during the football season, but all year long. I would laugh as he would contemplate and ponder during the off season who he should draft again and save as a keeper for the following year. Last time the Seahawks played in the NFC Championship game, Greg? Greg came over to watch it with me. We were in the fourth quarter, and it appeared that the Seahawks might lose. Greg got up and said, well, it was a good season. I'm going to go ahead and go home now. I thought he had left, but he quickly came back in, and he said, Kevin, you know what? I'm not going to be that guy. Win or lose, we're going to finish watching this game. As we know, the Seahawks did win that game and went on to go to the Super Bowl the second time. And Greg and I were so excited. There was some serious chest bumping, cheering, high-fiving, and we may or may not have shed a tear of joy. Greg, I'm confident that when you arrived in heaven, you shook things up a little bit. You started reorganizing the guest services team for the <laughs> triumphal welcome to heaven. So when I see you again, my friend, I'm expecting to be greeted with some chest bumping, some high-fives, and some tears of joy. 
I'm forever grateful for the gift and blessing of our friendship. I promise I will do everything I can do to look over your family with the same care and love that I know you would do for me until I see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I want to invite up uh, Greg's brother, Dean, to share some words. You know, it's great to hear people laugh when they're remembering Greg and some of his wonderful stories. Um, as you probably know, my brother Greg loved to laugh. Hand to his mouth, happy tears forming in his eyes. Greg was always generous with the gift of poking gentle fun at himself. And in true Fulton fashion, he loved telling stories just as much as his listeners enjoyed hearing them. You know, Greg's work was serious, and his life was often serious too. But when I picture Greg best, he's telling a story with that twinkle in his eye and that laugh. Greg and I were raised a bit like twins, born just 371 days apart. Our mid-August birthdays were a joint affair every year. I, I do remember that empty space feeling when Greg left for college and I spent that first birthday without him. Today that space feels more like a canyon. Today is the first significant family gathering that I could recall attending without Greg. Being so close in age, Greg and I had a lot of the same stuff, you know, big wheels, stereos, and our treasured 10-speed bikes. <laughs> they were identical, just different colors. When mom and dad rolled them out for us on Christmas morning, Greg immediately called his color. He's like, I want the green one. <laughs> now, I knew that Greg knew that I really wanted the red one. I really wanted it. And if deep down Greg wanted the red one too, he never did say so. Those bikes were freedom. And we rode everywhere in Lakewood together. And we even formed a mobile gang with our cousins, Todd, Mike, and Mark. <laughs> yeah, we dabbled in the life of crime. We organized a neighborhood heist of tire valve stem caps, <laughs> which our parents later discovered. Our plot foiled. The whole affair concluded with Greg and I trudging door to door, confessing and apologizing to our neighbors. Well, since crime didn't pay, Greg and I turned over a new leaf. I mean, really, who are we kidding? We were destined for the straight and narrow with our businessman haircuts and our Jake from State Farm wardrobes. <laughs> And as most of you probably know, Greg excelled, he did, as a student, as an athlete, as a friend, as an officer in the Air Force, as a faithful servant here at the Lake Sawyer Church, as an engineer for Boeing, and most importantly, as a husband and a father. I remember feeling so grateful the day he brought Raina home to meet us. It was clear they adored each other, and they would share many happy days. Later, beloved niece and nephew, Mitch and Kylan, brought their gifts and their humor to the family. Now, as you've heard, Greg's self-deprecating stories were his specialty. Always earnest, but sometimes with questionable execution, he embarked on many projects, including, but not limited to, destroying a perfectly good toilet, <laughs> assembling a brand new garden enclosure upside down, and staining his fence an unexpected shade of bright orange. Now, Greg always recalled these frustrating events with good humor, plenty of hilarious details, and with that laugh of his. Last fall, he invited me to be part of his beloved fantasy football league, and we texted multiple times a day to strategize for game day. When I beat him in the playoffs, he, without complaint, honored our side bet and posted a new profile picture of middle school Greg <laughs> with a puffy early 80s hairdo 
<laughs> you love that. <laughs> we all share the joy of Greg and Raina's welcoming kindness and generosity. We can all aspire to his example. We can all strive to match his capacity for patience, acceptance, and unconditional love. Of all the brothers in the world, how lucky I am that Greg was mine. I really can't begin to describe to you what it's like to stand up here without him. I will miss our birthdays together. I will miss his stories, his great stories. I will miss our annual backpacking trips with the boys. I will miss our special brother outings. We are actually going to go see Springsteen together later this month. We are so looking forward to it. I will miss beating Greg in fantasy football. <laughs> but you know, most of all, I will miss his laugh. I know none of us want to say goodbye to Greg, but we have to. And Greg, you know, as the boss said, though our souls feel like they're splitting at the seams, we will see you in our dreams. Godspeed, brother. We love you. Thank you very much, Dean. Lastly, I'd like to invite up Greg's children, Mitch and Kylan. All right, we figured out which direction to come up here. That's great. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. For those I have not met, my name is Kylan Fulton. I'm Greg's daughter, and this is my brother, Mitchell Fulton. We're his two kids, if you guys couldn't tell from all the lovely pictures. <laughs> We're here to speak on behalf of our dad as a father. Quite frankly, I could write a book about the moments I've shared with my dad that'll live on in my memory forever. It's difficult to articulate what type of father my dad was into words because he was just incredible. There's so much peace in knowing that my dad has, oh, thank you. I'm on my short girl tippy toes here. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much peace in knowing that my dad has impacted so many lives. I look around this room and feel comforted that so many people knew my dad like I did, as a compassionate, selfless man that was always present. As a father, I had always described my dad as simply the best. From childhood, my dad was always finding new ways to make us laugh and find the joy in everything. As many kids tend to feel, dad was our number one hero. As kids, we grew up watching our dad as he figured out the ups and downs of life. We, lit, we witnessed how kind and loving he was to our mom and what a remarkable team they were. We had a front row seat to one example after another of what it meant to live a life that is full. You'll never see him raise his voice, get angry, or get caught up in the messy parts of life. And one thing Dad always prioritized was ensuring that his family felt safe, loved, and secure in a world that was and still is increasingly challenging. I remember when I graduated high school, I was about to leave home for the first time. I was scared and I felt as though I had some big shoes to fill. I mean, you guys all heard what a wonderful person my dad was. Dad and I spent many long car rides together in Ellensburg. I told dad during our first move-in trip that if I could end up being even a quarter of the person he was by my life's end, I would have done something right. But of course, true to himself, he laughed and stayed humble. He said to me, no, it's not about being like me. It's about knowing to do the right thing for yourself and those you love and serve always. He always knew what to say because that's how effortless and joyful his love was. Dad's words of wisdom throughout our lives will never leave Mitch or I. We love our dad fiercely and I will never overcome the pain of his absence. There will never be a day he's not on my mind. As his kid, I'll never stop needing my dad as long as I live. I'll never forget his hugs, his words of encouragement, and his calming presence that could make any situation seem so small when the world felt so heavy. I'll miss his texts every day, his calls and his voice, and his goofy selfies he would send from his many adventures. Y'all saw the one in the sleeping bag? That one made me laugh really hard. <laughs> There's so much I will cherish and miss about him dearly. But needless to say, it's an absolute blessing to look at everyone here and think, wow, what an outstanding dad I have and how lucky am I to be his daughter. I look around and know each and every one of you have stories, interactions, and moments with my dad that have brought you here today to celebrate him, 
and nothing makes me prouder as his daughter to know how much my dad truly loved those around him, and that's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. At his core, he was and is simply the best. My only hope is that we can all continue to honor the service my dad committed his life to by loving one another and building each other up. We all must continue to hold our families, friends, and community in high esteem and truly live in the moments we have to those dear to us. And now, here's my brother, Mitch. There we go. I don't need short girl tippy toes. <laughs> well, how do you follow that up? Other than second verse, same as the first. The father... A father, a husband, a friend, a cousin, a nephew, a son. This is going to go smoother in my head. <laughs> Forgive me if I break up. This is the greatest challenge God has given me bar the day he passed. He was a sports fan, a gamer, a hiker, camper, and an athlete, a co-worker, a boss, acquaintance, a volunteer, a man of faith, and a credit to his community. To try and sum up the awe-inspiring amount that my dad was would do his vastness and justice. If you're here, he's probably touched your life in a meaningful way in some sort or another. And though some of us have never spoken, some of us haven't spoken in a while, my hope is that in this we understand each other. My father was a great many things, from devoted parent to working on cool airplane things that he can really always tell us about, <laughs> to one man yard excavator. Like, bro, really? You couldn't get help for that? He didn't need it. As someone who gets up and runs a 5 a.m. for fun. For fun? <laughs> to most likely to know the answer to my car tax question before even Google does. And everything in between and beyond. Different as all the things that he was are, they had something in common. Perfection. Excuse me. He just had such a perfect way of doing everything, didn't he? Perfect father to two children who could spend the rest of their lives expressing the gratitude for all that he was. And it would not be enough. A perfect son to my two wonderful grandparents to whom he made so proud perfect brother to my uncle, to whom he shared a bond like no other, a perfect husband to my mother, to whom he found a way to give the world and then some, perfect credit to his community, who always put others before himself in faith, in friendship, and in family, perfect generosity. We are here today with anything ranging from cracks to craters in our hearts at the loss of someone so incredible. If there's something, or if there's something he would have wanted today, it's to leave not in the sadness of what is gone, but to leave hearts full of what was. To pay a heart full of kindness forward in the way he did every moment of his life. I think nothing would make him prouder and honor his memory more. Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for your kindness, and thank you for being here with us today. A day more difficult than words can ever describe. It means more to me than you all can ever know. Thank you.
As Mitch just shared, today is a difficult day. Many of us come here with heavy hearts. Undoubtedly, there's a million other places that we would rather be on a day like today than here. Any of those places would be with Greg by our side. It would be simple to say right now amidst our grieving that God has a plan and that death is a part of it. But that isn't true. It is true that God has a plan. It's true that God's plan is always perfect. But yet death was never a part of his plan. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in a letter to the church in Corinth. He would say that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. You see, death was never the intended end. God created us to live in community with him in the absence of death for all eternity. Today, Greg is worshiping his heavenly father in the presence of his almighty savior. Death is not the last note. But what death does for us is it gives us an opportunity and a time to grieve and mourn. In John chapter 11, there's a story that is told of Jesus going to visit one of his close friends who has just recently died. When he gets to town, he's there greeted by Martha, the sister of Jesus' friend. And listen to what she says. Lord, Martha said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. There is sadness There's frustration. There's even anger in her words. I'm sure as she sits here and deals with the reality of what's happened, there's a questioning in this moment. She's probably thinking to herself, well, what if I would have done something different? There's a longing for God to intervene. She says as much, Jesus, if you would have done something different, if you would have been here, then none of this would have happened. As the story continues to unfold, we see the humanity of Jesus on full display. In verse 35, we're told that Jesus wept. He cried. And even though this is one of the shortest verses in Scripture, it is profound in its meaning. You see, the King of Kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, God here on earth, he cried and wept over the passing of his friend. This isn't insignificant. Sadness is normal. It's a healthy reaction to losing someone you love. Jesus himself mourned the loss of his beloved friend. Your sadness is normal. Your grief is normal. Your questions are normal are normal. Your anger is normal. But through all of it, what I also want you to know is there is a God who is ready to offer you the kind of comfort that only God can provide. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we read these words, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we have received from God. The Apostle Paul says it's during the trials of our life, it's during these difficult seasons that the comfort we experience with one another is in part what gets us through. You see, during Greg's life, each one of us here experienced the comfort of his love. We've experienced his kindness and his goodness. We've experienced his determination and his care. Scripture also teaches us that life here on earth, it's fleeting. It is a temporary thing. And while when we're in it, there's these times and these seasons where it feels like life is so long, the truth is, and it's what multiple people have said, when it comes to an end, especially in the case of someone like Greg today, it feels too short. One of the psalmists wrote about the frailty of life. We read this in Psalm 39. He says, show me, O Lord, show me my life's end, 
and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. As we sit here today saying goodbye to Greg, our time with him seems too short. Yet we're thankful for every single moment that we've shared with them because a person's life is not defined by the amount of years that they have lived, but rather a person's life is defined by the moments that they have shared. The Italian poet Cesar Pavisi said it this way. He says, we do not remember days. We remember moments. Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy put it this way. She would say, life isn't a matter of milestones, but of moments. Moments with friends, family, children, co-workers, and loved ones. Moments of celebration and laughter, moments of sadness and struggle. Moments when we're surrounded by loved ones and intimate moments shared with just a few close friends. These are the moments that make up our lives. These are the moments that we're here to celebrate and remember. You see, the moment that each of us have sent or shared with Greg will never be forgotten. Part of those moments and those memories, they defined him as a person, but they also shape who we are today. And as these moments will live on in us, so too will Greg through our memories. You see, the greatest blessing that we can have in this life is to know the comfort of God's love. A love that promises to never leave us or forsake us. A love that stands by us even in our darkest hours and keeps us strong when we feel so broken and weak. Jesus says in probably one of the most famous verses in the Bible that God loved the world so much that he sent his son to earth to die for us. Jesus gave his life on the cross and rose again so that we too one day could conquer death and live in paradise with him. That's the good news of scripture. It's the amazing gift of grace. Jesus himself would say these words in John 11. He would say, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Again, death was not part of God's plan. And while on earth there is the reality that life is temporary, there is a part of us that will live on forever. That our bodies may stop, but our souls continue on. This is the hope and the promise that we have in Jesus. Again, not just hope for today, but hope for eternity. And so as we live with the pain of this loss, what we do is we, 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 we yearn for the God of all comfort to bring us the kind of comfort that his word promises. And we pray that in our sorrow that Christ will make us new. One of the psalmists wrote this in Psalm 40. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song on my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Greg has left us far too soon. But that in no way takes away from the legacy that he leaves behind. But here's the thing, and I think Kevin kind of hit the nail on it with this, is it's now our job. It's our job to continue Greg's legacy, to carry on and to care about the things that he cared about. It's our job to come alongside Raina and Mitch and Kylan, and to give you the kind of love that your dad had for you, that your husband had for you. Because of our love for Greg, we now have the responsibility to show love to the people he cared about the most. And it's through that care and in our memories that his legacy 
will continue on. Would you pray with me? Father, it is here in the presence of death that we know that you are the source of life. And that every single breath that we have is a gift from you. May we live each day knowing that we too shall walk in the valley of the shadow. But even when we do, God, your love and your goodness, they guide us. Your love and the, your, your goodness, they show us the way in difficult seasons. We thank you for the comfort that we receive from your presence and the hope that we have in your son, Jesus. Our prayer is that through the power of your spirit, that you would turn our sorrow into joy. You would turn our sadness into peace. And we pray all these things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, we are actually going to sing one of Greg's favorite songs. It is a old but goody 90s worship song uh, called Friends, and the tagline are Our Friends Forever. And so as they sing the song, we want to invite you guys, uh, again, in an honor of Greg, if you know the words, join us in singing this song together. Okay, well, following Celeste is not my favorite thing to do. She's amazing. <laughs> um, my name is Darla Towers. I am Greg's sister-in-law, Raina's sister. And I'm going to try and get through this. Sorry. Um, on behalf of the family, we would like to thank you for coming. My job's to close this beautiful tribute that we've had today to Greg. I would like to kind of see who's in the room today. So, um, anyone who is a family member, would you please stand and remain standing? Um, I'd like to have everyone that went to school with Greg to stand and remain standing. I'd like to have everyone that went um, in the military service with Greg to stand 
and remain standing, and we thank you for your service. If you went to church or served in a ministry or a church group with Greg, please stand and remain standing. If you worked with Greg, would you please stand and remain standing? If you're a friend, a hiking pal, a neighbor of Greg, would you please stand and remain standing? If you knew Greg through Mitch and Kylan, please stand and remain standing. Um, my wish is to point out to you how a very special person that we honor today touched so many lives in a very personal way. Please be reminded as you leave this building today of how many of you touched not only Greg's life, but all those that you encounter in your lives. Be reminded of the impact that we all make on those around us. That's what Greg did for each of us. Um, I was having coffee with Greg one morning recently, and this came up on my phone. I read it out loud while we were having coffee, and he sat up in his seat and he said, ooh, I really like that. Um, so I thought I'd read it. It says, smile more than you cry, give more than you take, love more than you hate. So with that, we'd like to have you guys come back and enjoy us for, uh, join us for refreshments, share stories with us about Greg, and again, thank you very much for coming today. <laughs>